Hi, in today's video of Fusing with Python, we will demonstrate how to build a generalized facet. We will build everything in Python using a Fusing tool called Atheris, which can be imported as a module. We choose Python for being high level and its widespread use, especially by beginner programmers. Why is a facet? As mentioned in previous videos, the best way to catch bug is the code is by testing it. This can be achieved with test suites or by simply using the program. A good example for the latest case can be beta testers for the games. They test the game, aka the program, but playing it. To get good results from, from that, it is good to have a lot of people or getting players that try weight combinations looking to trigger bugs. This is very similar to what a fuzzer does. Fuzzers feed random data to a program trying to cover all the path choice combinations. To achieve this, the random data gets feedback to the fuzzer after each run and it will try to mutate said data, prioritizing the inputs that results in higher coverage or reaching new paths of the code base. Ideally, a good configuration uh, will generate bogged inputs uh, that won't fail right away, and that will probably trigger obscure bugs, similar to what a hacker might try when attacking. Now let's talk about the theories. As mentioned before, we're going to use that theories. Let's read the repo description. Atheris is a coverage-guided Python fuzzing engine. Atheris is based off a flip fuzzer, and when fuzzing native code, Atheris can be used in combination with other sanitizer or undefined behavior sanitizer to catch extra bugs. If you haven't already installed it, pip should cover you with that. Uh, you can use the command pip3 install Atheris, or pip install Atheris, depending on which version of Python you have. And if that fails, you should check the GitHub repo for unknown issues or alternative installation instructions. As the description previously states, Atheris is a coverage guided, which means that it gathers coverage information for each mutated input to discover new execution paths and potential bugs. Now let's create a simple facet with Python, and for that, my partner Juanma is going to help you. Hello, everyone. The library we'll be testing today is a tool for parsing and serializing abstract syntax notation structures, uh, which are also known as ASM1. This is a standard used to describe data structure in a cross-platform and cross-language way. The standard is used for a variety of communication protocols, including the creation of signatures. In this exercise, we are going to test serializing an integer with a naive input. The code will look as follows. First, we import the Atheris library and the library we want to test. Then we have a function called serialize, which will have the main logic for all the fuzzing. The first step is actually instantiating the fuzzer. Then, with that fuzzer, we are going to create a random integer within a range from 0 to 1 billion. And then we're going to try to serialize that integer, and that's where ASN1 comes in. If you try to run this, it will fail almost immediately because ASN1 expects a specific format for integer. If you want to know more about these formats, we'll leave a link to some documentation in the video description. Now, with that information in mind, we can improve the fuzzer. For now, just know that the first byte represents the integer type, which is a 0 2. The second byte is the structure size, and the rest is the binary integer number. You can see that a couple of things have changed from the previous implementation, but the main thing to pay attention to is these hard coded values 0 2 and 0 1, which are needed for ASN1 to actually interpret correctly the integer. Here you can see the output of the fuzzer, now trying random numbers to test our function. Near the beginning of, the, of each new line, you can see the call keyword that keeps track of the current coverage. This will change depending on how you instrumented your fuzzer. There's a lot of hardware options to keep track of the coverage of your fuzzer. And then near the end, you will see an exec uh, slash s, which are the executions per second of your fuzzer. Generally, a higher number is 
better, but it will depend on what you're fussing. With this, you can start creating a new fuzzer to make your code more secure or to test someone else's code. And remember that we don't always test every path, and some extra help to extensively test our code is always a good tool. Bye.